Hello and welcome back to my craft room. It's time for a little bit more millivery madness today. Um, I've got another little technique which is new to me that I'm going to have a go at and, and that is making, I'm going to say this wrong, I know I am, that is making Zwirn Knopf. I'm going to put it here. <laughs> buttons i've been inspired by um gina b silkworks gina's videos on her youtube channel are amazing and there's have a lady called ariane zirka or search i don't know how you say it. again I'll, I'll put it here i'll link to both of them below anyway so it's kind of my spin on it i don't think i'm technically doing it quite right but i like how they've turned out so i'm going to do a couple more of them today and show you how i'm doing that and um quick look at my, what my end goal is going to be for this project because i do feel like the end is in is in sight i'm sure i've already sh shown you maggie morris's beautiful um interpretation of this before that i showed you kerry's um collaged art collage take on the mid of fury idea which i also loved and the latest person I've known, jump, I've noticed jumping on board is Tori of Cool Kooky Creatures. She's done one in all these beautiful zingy um, greens and blues, beautiful, all in felt. Uh, so I'm dying to see how that turns out. So we're all very different. We're taking the same inspiration, um, but they're all turning out really different. And that's lovely. That's always fun. So let me show you where I'm at. This is what I've done so far. Now I'm going to have a black background. I think. Um, I asked everybody's opinion and the general consensus agreed with what I thought which was the black, ba black background really makes these pop. The reason I've got this fabric here now is that this is going to be the lining to the bag I'm going to make with this and the camera goes a bit funny if I put loads of black there. It just goes really, if I put loads of white or loads of black it just goes funny so I've put this in. <laughs> Uh, but it definitely the black background behind these really makes it pop just having that little bit of black space in between i also asked you all to give me your opinions on whether to kind of um overlap more um because my initial thought was to keep them all separate and then when i saw that maggie's original layout she'd overlap them i thought oh maybe it's better to overlap them i can't decide now but i noticed in maggie's finished piece she hadn't overlapped them after all so i'm going to go with my initial instinct not overlap them leave these tiny areas of white space in between which will become black space <laughs> but still white space in that sense of the word and i'm getting close to the point where this is kind of the side of the main the size of the main front and back panels of the bag i'm envisaging b b henderson quite rightly pointed out that it could be a bit of a problem lovely idea a bit of a problem having all these kind of 3d elements in a bag but my plan is that some of the they're not all going to be separate pieces like this and 3d pieces like this um, some will, will become more 3d because i will pile them up on top of each other layer them up um, but some will just be layers of fabric applied directly to the background fabric and just stitched into and that's what Maggie's done. It looks absolutely amazing. And that's what, what um, some call Latrina. That's what Tori has done. Somebody did one of the, one of the suggestions was that you could uh, use um, buttons, you know, buttons that have a shank, and actually kind of sink them into the middle of the Suffolk puffs. That'd be really cute. So I thought it was a lovely idea. I'll definitely be doing some of that. But yeah, we're, we're in my bag, what I'll do is I'll have a look at the fabric pieces of my bag. Think about where I can have the more three D elements and then blend it out into the flatter motifs as I go towards the top where the handle is going to be and, and towards seams and things and obviously on the bottom I won't have any motifs at all and then if I wanted to when I stitch the bag together where the seams are I could lay more circles over the top so it appears to have no seams at all I'm not sure how that will work yet but I've got that in my head just before we look at what I'm going to do today this is a quick glimpse at where I'm going I've got this lovely book from Amazon I think it's about 15 quid and it comes with 35 patterns I noticed in the reviews somebody was upset because they didn't realize that they'd have to trace out the 35 patterns because you, there's never going to be room in a paperback book for 35 full-size patterns are there they are full size at least you haven't got to get them zoomed out or anything but obviously if, if there was enough if they used enough paper to do 35 separate patterns it would be a very bulky book indeed probably twice the price so yeah you just have to identify which bits you need to cut for the pattern you're following it will be different colors for for different um different colors and lines and things 
and numbers for the different bags. So I think the one I'm going to do for this is a lovely variety of types of bags. Those are just some of them. I'm going to go with this one. I'll give you a quick flick through so you can see. I love the rucksack on the back. Um, lots of really useful looking instructions. Remains to be seen how well they work when I actually come to follow them. Part of that will be down to whether down to me not the book <laughs> there's some really fun sort of novelty ideas like this I love the cupcake one um, yeah all kinds a huge variety something for everybody in there really nice book if you wanted to make up some start making some christmas presents and things i love this just this is very sort of plain and simple isn't it really but actually i'd probably use that quite a lot and that uh, love those shapes um, so the one I'm going to do I think is this one probably the the larger one and I'll concentrate the more 3D, bit, 3D bits on this pocket when I come to this flatter part here this upper part here rather I'll make them I'll, I'll use the flatter motifs that's, that's that's what I'm kind of thinking at the moment so what we'll need to do is identify the pieces the pattern pieces for that bag cut them out of the not cut them out of the paper trace them I've got a roll of tracing paper trace them off cut them out and then I can start laying out my motifs to fit the pattern pieces that I'm going to cut. So that's my plan. Just sort of give you a little peek at, at what, I've, what I've got in my head to do with all these pieces at the end. So um, I've been trying, if you've been following, you'll know, I've been trying various different ways to create these circular motifs inspired by Millefiori glassware and things like um I've, I've been looking at gustav klimt's paintings he show he he uses a lot of very i love all the kind of rich patterned fabrics that he, that you see in his paintings and you can see definitely elements of millefiori in in there some of these i've still got to work on like this one i've just got that sequin loose and i want to do some more stitching some of the stitching won't happen until they're applied to the background fabric and then i'll stitch into them i've been doing a combination of suffolk puffs i've been using the 3d rings that tom my son printed off for me mind me to tell you about that in a minute i did um some shisha work in some of them which i think i've already shown i will incorporate some things like these little things that come from that were in the bazaar scrap packs for all of these i'm using my bazaar silk scraps and the bougie scrap bags that i got from megan crook textiles um, those these ones will come in more when i come to do the flat sort of directly applied fabrics so i've been playing with a few ideas next time i was really happy with this i've been using i've been recycling these night lights and um, I just poked a hole in the bottom with this <laughs> and um, used a combination of a couple of different Suffolk puffs and some stitching to create this and I just love that I put a little stitch a little bead into the center which will kind of it's securely fastened in but it, it because it's on a shank it will still move around I think that's really cute I like that so I'm going to show you how to make that next time here's another one that I did slightly different still like it don't like it quite as much but and what i'm going to do this time is these zwirn knopf buttons so i used the rings that tom i'll show you in a minute the rings that tom 3d printed for me and i'd already done this this is kind of an adapted dorset button i did it like you would do a dorset button but because it's a flat ring that i'm using i couldn't like roll the stitches around to the back in quite the same way but the back isn't it's not going to show so it doesn't matter and when i stitch this on i may just layer it up with another one like i have there or i may just stitch it straight onto the black background fabric and then stitch some other you know i can stitch into it again onto the background fabric i can't wait now to get into putting them on the background fabric but i feel like i need just a few more circles to play with to lay everything out um so yeah I'm, i will show those next time today i'm going to do some of the a couple of the zwirn knopf buttons that's another one i did so these are the ones that i've done you can incorporate these ones are just um got the, the thread in the center but you can also incorporate other things like bottle caps like this can go in there you can reuse bottle caps you just might need to use a little pair of pliers to pull the 
um, the fluted edges out again. I'll link to Gina B because she explains all about that. That one was a shisha mirror, but I also did one with a big sequin in it, but it went a bit wrong. So it's gone to one side. I'm not going to be using it because I only used one layer of the ring and it's not sturdy enough. I warped it, look. So I don't think that's going to get used, unfortunately. It may end up sort of, you know, maybe I could just slightly hide it under some other one. I'm not sure. <laughs> so I won't throw it away, but you know. Um, but yeah, that one just got a sequin in the middle and that worked quite well. And I don't see any reason why you couldn't um, enclose other things in the middle as well, like buttons, you know. What I'll do is in a minute, I'll do one with with a, a mirror or a sequin or something on it. And I'll do another one without so you can see both ways. And you'll see what I mean. You could just enclose anything there. I, have to have, I need to go through my vintage button selection and pick out a few more just buttons I can use on their own. That one I think is a bit much on its own, but there's no reason why I couldn't layer up one of my little um, circular pieces on top of the buttons. I could have even layer buttons three deep, you know, to, to like vary. I wanted to have a variation of depth with this. These are the rings that Tom, my son, 3D printed for me. It is eco-friendly 3D printing filament called PLA. Polylactic, polylactic acid, I think it's called. And it can be recycled. Any The tiny amount of waste, and I'll show you how tiny the waste is in a minute, that he gets, he saves because it can all be recycled. A lot less waste than there is in other ways of, of using plastic. And um, I'm not going to get into the plastic thing again, but suffice to say this isn't single-use plastic. Um, and, you know, not all plastic is bad. I'll just say that. You know, um, the sequins I'm using are plastic. The keyboard I'll be using to edit this video is plastic. The glasses I'm looking through are plastic. That's it, I'm saying no more. <laughs> anyway, these are also plastic. I've been using these Suffolk Puff Makers as well. Now, the reason I mention both these things is a lot of people have asked now if they can get hold of some of these rings and I have searched and searched online. I have a few alternatives to suggest to you. Um, some I've come up with and some other people have suggested in the comments as well. Thank you very much. That's really helpful. But there's nothing else quite like quite as versatile as these. They're lovely because he's done such um, a good variation of sizes. They're printed off in stacks like this. So you just split off one or two at a time or three at a time even just you know you could use all of them at a the time if you wanted depending on what thickness you want so this is where for this one i should have left it i should have peeled off two and it would have been sturdier so i like that that makes it really versatile and i can use them inside a suffolk puff to make sure i get a really regular smooth circular shape and even if i don't want to close the suffolk puff up completely it'll still make hold that nice round shape also I can use it I think yeah I did with this one I just stitched a the tiniest little scrap I had left of this just around one of the, the rings just secured it on with some over stitching and it works like a little kind of embroidery hoop that you leave in so you can do things so like with the shisha work it just made that so easy so they are brilliant. they're brilliant for all sorts of things and they work for these swear well, not for buttons and I think there will be lots of other things I use them for so they are brilliant and a few people have said, can they buy them? Or could Tom share the files with them to 3D print it themselves? Um, Tom is a bit worried about sharing the files. He needs to tweak them because he has to do a lot of um, fiddling about with it still at the moment. There are a few tweaks he needs to make. He's got a lot on his plate at the moment, so I'm not sure how soon he'll get around to doing that, but he did say that he would. And also, I've been trying to persuade him to just print off a few sets and we'll put them up in my Etsy shop or whatever and see if people want to buy them. He has got around to printing one set off for me um, and I've kept it all together with, and I've kept it with this because this is the waste that comes off the platform after once he's released these. That's all the waste there was. And a tiny bit, when, when it first starts up, a tiny, tiny bit of waste comes out of the nozzle. A bit like when you first use a tube of glue and sometimes you get that first little bit you have to just kind of waste because it's dried up. It's just like no more than that, a tiny bit. So it's really not very wasteful. So I've left those together. Now this, these don't look like very many, but there's 18 different sizes there. These are th obviously thinner than these as well. 18 different sizes and for 
for each size there's a stack of six so you can just peel off I just thought I'd just stick my thumbnail under there but you could put just put any sort of thin thing underneath there just to just to get it started and then you just peel it off it's quite satisfying actually so the six high and there's 18 sizes so that makes 108 so there's actually 108 rings there and Tom has printed off that little set to do as a giveaway and because I ended up um, losing, I lost my set of Suffolk Puff Makers, Yo-Yo Makers. I ended up buying another set and then the old one turned up. I kept the new set intact to do as a giveaway at some point. So not for our next live stream, which is coming up on Saturday, but for the October one, that will fall on October the 5th. We're planning a real humdinger of a live stream for October the 5th. I'm going to give these away as a set. And that'll be what an amazing set. I'm, I think it's a lovely prize if I do say so myself. <laughs> so if you're after if you're after some of these and a lovely set of yo-yo makers, that makes four different sizes of yo-yos or Suffolk puffs. And I'm finding all sorts of different ways to use them, including this project. So enough of all that. Let's have a go at making a Zwernot button. Hope I'm saying that right. I'll just peel off two layers this time. I'll keep that one for another for another piece so this is nice and sturdy now as I said I couldn't find anything else that's quite there's lots of lovely supplies for doing this kind of thing on Gina B Silkworks and she does have wooden ones kind of similar to this and some metal ones similar to this but it's a variation of sizes I wanted for this particular project that I can't find anywhere and um, because this isn't this isn't for buttons I, I want these bigger than you would want for buttons but there are lots of let's just run through some of the alternatives that people have suggested using old bracelets like those wire bracelets and, and plastic bangles and things definitely that could work they'd be bigger than these obviously but still could be really striking to use ice cream tubs and things um i haven't got an ice cream tub handy but it's this kind of plastic where it's quite strong it's quite flexible this is the top off one of tom's pringles tubes um i bet i could use that as well i'm not going to worry because i've got all these to use but you know um, you could actually slice up the Pringles tube itself. It's not very... Uh, you couldn't do something where you had to put a lot of stress on it. But it certainly would be enough to do like a wrap around, like a Suffolk puff that wraps around a bit like I've done with the night lights. You definitely could experiment with that. Someone else suggested plastic bottles, slice up plastic bottles. And if you heat the edges, it will kind of smoothen the edges for you. So that's definitely worth a try. Um, I've been using these night lights. You could also flatten the night lights, cardboard circles. If you've got a die cutting machine, you could cut cardboard. Because um, cutting rings like this, it would be quite awkward by hand. But if you've got a die cutting machine, you could do rings, and then you could stack them up. Because I think you'd need so you'd need to glue together several layers of cardboard to get it something this sturdy. But definitely worth having a go. Um, if you're just cutting them by hand you could just do solid circles um, wooden rings you know like curtain rings I've got different size plastic and metal rings there that I've bought in the past for making dorset buttons with you just buy them in haberdashery shops as um, if you have a look in the in the comments for the previous couple of videos in this series and probably there will be some on this one as well you'll find there's lots of helpful suggestions where people have said oh you could try this you could try that definitely all sorts of things you could try um i haven't found anything else that you can buy i've found various things i found some bamboo rings but they were only in one size i found you know obviously metal washers and things like that but again it's the range of sizes and the versatility of being able to choose the thickness and the fact that they're as metal ones would be all right but they would be heavier which might be nice but for these what i like is they're they're pretty sturdy but they're lightweight i just need tom to print off a few now oh they look nice stacked together look at that mm. so yeah i need a good few more of these circles to play with and um if i end up too many i'll just stack them up or overlap them a bit you know i don't think i can have too many to play with i suppose is what i'm saying the other thing i'm using with making this thread wrapped button is zwern knot button is beeswax which really helps to just give a slight slight tackiness to the surface of the plastic so that it will grip the thread a bit better and it doesn't slip around so much by a lump of beeswax like this it 
last year for i've had this for years you can see i've been using it to wax thread with okay i've got all kinds of gorgeous threads here some of these lovely um steph francis ones here shirley benson sent me that one christine sent me that one i've got some lovely stranded cottons this little pot of strand this is my little useful pot of stranded buttons um I've got some of this wool here, this variegated wool, and this was sent to me by my friend Jackie from Do You All Know Jackie as Fabulous Jacks in Discord? And she dyes, she was um, dyeing walls and things herself, and she sent me three different colour variations that she'd done, and this was one of them. And I thought, this, I might try this on one of the larger rings to make a really big Schwern Knopf button. And I've got some of these um, crochet threads as well. I don't know what weight these are anymore, but you can see it's that kind of fine crochet thread as far as i can see the, one of the main differences if you're looking at these two kinds of buttons they've been done in a kind of similar way but with the dorset button you wrap all of this outer ring first and then you put the spokes on and then you weave your, your, your contrasting thread in and out and around like this with the Joan knot for ones you do the spokes first which does make it a bit harder to make them stay in place and then you do another layer and another layer I've done three layers there um, after the first layer I put the, the mirror down and then once you've done all of that then you go back through and fill up the gaps in the outer ring with like a like a blanket stitch so it's a different it's kind they could look they kind of look similar but they are different and I do think they fit really nicely with the whole Millefiori idea um, and there are lots of different variations that you know different you can stitch into them things all kinds of things you can do really quite complicated ones Gina B's got a lovely selection and I haven't looked I haven't watched Ariane Circus so much because I've only just found her but yeah um, Gina B's got a whole book just on making or a couple of books I think just on making these kind this kind of buttons She's got loads of button books, but just on the Joan Knopf ones, it's at least one or two books she's got. So I put I put my, my beeswax on to make it slightly stickier, just make it easier to hold the thread. And I'm going to do my, my initial wraps. Okay, so I'm holding the thread at the back, taking it straight across, and I think I'm going to wrap this. I'm just going to do it twice, I think, this time. So for each wrap, I'm going to do it twice. And I'm turning anti-clockwise each time my thread is still attached to my ball I would say if you want a proper professional demonstration of how to do this don't, don't watch me go and, go and watch um, Gina or Ariane <laughs> This is just, <coughs> this is the klutz version. But like I always say with these things, when I'm trying something for the first time, if I can do it, anyone can. Just love it when I try something new for the first time, have a go and then lots of people jump down the rabbit hole with me. It just makes my day, that does. I'm trying to keep these spaced evenly. Now I'm being lazy because what Gina did was mark out her spokes first and she's got a very handy little kind of stencily looking gadget for marking out different numbers of um, spokes in different sizes of circles which would be a really handy little thing to have. Maybe I'll see if Tom could print me one of them. I think I'm supposed to end up with an even number. Let's just see if we've got an even number. So Gina calls this a wrap and then the individual, the arms out from, out from the centre are called spokes. That's eight wraps and 16 spokes. So I need to carefully hold this together, cut my thread. I'm going to leave myself quite a good length, I think. Thread up a needle. Should have had a needle ready. I probably could let go of this or just put a clip in the middle or something to hold it. I don't know, but I don't want to let go. So that's the front. I'm going to fasten this thread off at the back. And I think, I don't know if I meant to do this, but I'm going to tie it in a little knot with that with that first end as well. Well, it's not looking as neat as Gina's, but 
Okay, I'm just going to cut that off now. That's a short one. I'm just going to readjust where I've moved things around a bit there. Try and get these all reasonably even. It's probably not perfect by a long chalk, but I think that'll do me. And then what I did with um, like that one, I just went back and forth across the middle a few times to make sure it was all really secure. Where I was going to use a mirror in the middle, or a secret or whatever, or if I was going to put a bottle cap or button or something in the middle, I, I wouldn't bother. Um, but let's do this one as if it's going to be open in the middle. So I'm going to just go across each of these, but so I'm coming up there and I'm going to go back down the opposite side. So I came up there and I'm going to come up on the next one, straight across down the opposite side. So that's two, isn't it? I suppose I should want to do eight altogether. That's three. I've never been, that's four, I've never been a purist about any of these things. It's good to, to watch and learn how things should be done. But I'm very much a believer in if you find a way that works for you and it looks nice and you're happy with it. Don't worry about it. Was that five or six? I don't know. I've done all of them now. So I've pulled that tight now and that's pulled that all in to a nice neat knot in the middle and all the spokes are nicely separated. So whether or not that's the right way to do it, I'm sure it's something like that. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Apologies to Gina and Ariane if I've butchered it. I would say, well, they won't watch my video anyway, but Gina did watch my video last time and very kindly left a comment, so made me nervous now. So this is all so tight on the back now I can't get in there to fasten it off. Okay let's just pull that through, go back through the loop to make a little knot. There we go. And now I can, I'm ready to change colour. And now I've got two thicknesses of the um, 3D printed ring it's perfectly it's not warping at this at this stage with that first one it was warping all over the place and I couldn't bring it back once it started so yeah obviously it needs the two thicknesses for that okay should we go with some of this next is that a bit too much for contrast let's do it they should be able to see it nicely won't you so again I'm leaving it on the on the roll I'm not going to try and explain it because I don't think I'll do a very good job of it I'll, I'll <laughs> you to go and watch one of the experts if you want a proper explanation but I'm just going to wind this across there so it's not quite at the middle and I've got in this case it depends on how many spokes you've got to start with but I've got one two three four five spokes in between so I need to remember that and keep that constant so now I'm moving around anti-clockwise and I'm going next to this one next to this spoke and again I've got one two three four five spokes in between moving around again going up to that one if, and if I ever get confused which it does get confusing once you've got once you've started wrapping all the way around you just have to count the spokes in between and keep going back to that So I'm just going to work around like this. See now I'm not going to an empty one so it's not so obvious but if I get stuck I'm coming up here so I know one, two, three, four, five is this one I'm going next to. It kind of just goes straight across so it's, it's sort of obvious anyway but if it does get confusing you can just count the spokes again. It's making these lovely little triangle patterns now. Ah, I've forgotten which one I was on. That one. OK, 
as I, I've been around each one now you can see they've all got triangles around and I don't have to change colour here I could carry on in the same colour I think I might just do one more wrap in the same colour because this is quite fine this purpley magenta -y. it's like a pinkish purple it's very pretty There we go, it's another round done and I can see I've gone all the way around because each of them has got, I can see the two thicknesses of the green cotton and then two thicknesses either side of the pinky purple cotton. Um, so that's, yeah, that's that so far. I don't know how well it's going, I hope it's coming across all right on camera. And of course all of this can then be layered onto another colour background as well. I might not do any more of these kind of wraps now because I want to try and not make this video so super long and now I'm going to just do the ring bit but first of all of course I've got to fasten off my thread again this kind of needle like this is sort of blunt bluntish end with the big eye it seems to work really well for me anyway okay so that's that's the back the back looks quite nice as well actually I'm just gonna go under a little bit here put my needle back through the knot and put it tight to fasten it off. Just that bit done. It's pretty quick actually considering I'm new as well. I bet once you get used to this you do it really fast. And now I could go into the darker purple but I feel like I might get a bit too dark. I could bring in a blue. Mm, quite like that. I think it's either that or oh, I've got some of this stranded cotton use something different so but my back is still looking my backside is still not that messy is it I'm just I'm just gonna go in the back there somewhere <laughs> I'll just leave that for a minute I've got all six strands of my embroidery floss and it's now on a needle I've got quite a long length not so long it's gonna get too tangly hopefully but I want to try and avoid starting another piece of thread if I can. Although if I have to, that's fine. It's, it's, it's easy enough to do. So I'm just going to do like a kind of a little macrame knot or blanket stitch around the edge like you would for a dorset button. So I'm coming up at that edge, going down under the ring, coming up there and making sure I come out on top of this loop so that as I pull it through it catches the loop and makes that little knot it's like it is very much like doing macrame or, or blanket stitch and, and exactly the same kind of thing that you would do with a dorset button and it looks like I'm going to probably need four of those stitches between each of my spokes You can see that it's just like finishing off quite nicely. Then there are some extra stitches that you can do in between, which I'll show you in a minute. So I'm going to go through and do the rest of this now, and then I'll be back. I'm to the end of my thread, so I thought I'd just quickly show you what I'm going to do. So that's where I've got to. On all I'm going to do is put my needle back through there to make a little loop. Go back through the the loop to to knot it like that. So that's all secure now. And then I'm going to, whoops, hard to do it at arm's length with very focals on. <laughs> I'm just going to take the thread away under the stitches and hide it away under the stitches. Snip it off and I'll start a new one in the same way. I'll just take a length of thread all the way under here and come out here and start again. Just thought I'd show you that. I'll finish going around the edge now. Um, no sign of warping at all just needed those two thicknesses obviously so now I'm just I could leave it at that but I could I, I can also add a bit more stitching and there's different ways you can do it. there's all sorts of different fancy stitches you can do but I'm just going to take a straight stitch um, across these spokes and then I'm going to go down between 
those inside spokes there and see, I'll see what that looks like. If I don't like it, I'll take it out. And I've carried, because I've still got thread in my needle, I'm just going to carry on with the same colour thread. Oh, I quite like that. I think it'd be a nice little detail. Um, so the next one is coming up here. And I'm going to go down there. So it's just making an extra little set of spokes over the top, isn't it, really? And I'll go all the way around with that one and fasten it off. And I think I'll call that one done because I'll end up putting this over the top of another background. Ooh, it looks quite nice with that one, doesn't it? Is that one all finished? I think it's quite pretty and it looked nice with the colour behind it or just the black coming through behind it. Not too messy on the back for me either. <laughs> I've just I've started this one and I've done the first round of the, the putting the spokes in with this variegated ball that Jackie sent me. You can't really see the purple in it so much there. It's got more a uh, kind of a pinky purples in there that you can't really see on camera. Um, I've tried to make the spokes as even as I can and this time I'm going to incorporate a sheet of mirror so I haven't bothered to do all that knotting across the middle that I did before I've just knotted the two ends together at the back so now I'm going to put my sheet of mirror there and I'm going to move onto this pale blue colour crochet cotton and I'm going to do that same wrap I did before where there were five I think I had five spokes in between didn't I um, I just need to catch in the edges of the mirror this time a bit like doing sheet work really except instead of stitching on I'm, I'm just wrapping it in with the thread that's obviously not securing the mirror well enough just wondering now we have to go across with another layer of the of the um, wool I think I'm going to do that because I think it will show it off better as well well my scent my centre has ended up not central, but I like it. I'm really happy with that now. That's fine. So now I've only got the edges, and it's not an awful lot of edges left to cover now. To be very little. But there are some small gaps where you can just see the grey plastic, and I don't want that. So I will go around and just stitch around those edges. I've ended up with a tiny little bit of mirror showing, but it's still quite a cute little accent, I think. I just think I might try another one of the stitches that I saw. This time go across that little bit where that triangle comes down, where this cross happens. I go across there. Maybe I'll try that this time. I'm going to do it like a back stitch. I think there are loads and loads you could just play around with this for ages, trying different um, variations, following some of the uh, of the patterns that people like Gina have put together. Yeah, I think I'm going to quite like the look of that. I think what I'm going to do though is go around and do another layer of that, and then I'll use the same colour again to go around. Just put perhaps a couple of blanket stitches, maybe three at most, in between each of these triangles to finish off those edges. And I think that would be fine. I've, I've finished doing another line of stitching around there. I don't think I'm going to do another line around, no, oh I did fill in the gaps in the ring, in the pale blue. And I think if I want any more colour I'll add it when I stitch this onto the backing fabric and that might be in a chunky kind of um, contrast like a, a lime green or something like that going into these gaps to hold it onto the onto the fabric it's hard to describe what I mean so yeah um, I think I've got a lot of practicing to do with these but I do enjoy the technique and it's amazingly quick to do as well actually I think it fits in quite nicely with the with the whole um, Miller Fiori thing. Let's make a pretty thumbnail. So yeah, quite pleased with them. I've really enjoyed learning how to do that. Um, I might do a couple of dorset buttons as well. 
and um, some more of the other kinds of circular motifs that I've done. Next time I come back, I'll be showing how I did the deep dish ones. <laughs> and um, and then it will be on to the more applied straight to the background ones. I'll be doing a bit of uh, negative, what do you call it? Uh, reverse applique. I'll be doing things like using these uh, hair elastics to create kind of form between layers of, of the fabric. And I'll just be layering up circles of bright colourful fabrics, sparkly bits, all sorts of things. Okay, so that's it for this week. And um, next week I should be back with the deep dish ones. <laughs> I'll have to think of a better name for them, aren't I? <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if, you, if you were doing anything inspired by this project, please do keep sharing pictures in the Facebook group and all the Discord community because I do love to see them. Oh, I was going to show you Tories. What I'll do is I'll put a link to Tories video. I'll put a link to Tories video um, in there because I forgot to show that. I showed Maggie's picture last time. I've shown Kerry's picture before. I'll put a link to Tories video and you can go and check it out. Okay, thanks very much again for joining me today and I'll see you again really soon. Bye.